Good morning and welcome to another edition of the Morning Devotional. Today is Monday, October 24th, 2022. This is edition number 16 of season six. As we continue looking our, uh, working our way through the book of Exodus, this morning we come to Exodus chapter 16. Let's pray first and then we'll consider briefly this chapter. Our God in heaven, as we come now to your word and we come to this section which highlights so clearly uh, he who is the bread of life, the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray that you would strengthen us and give us guidance and grace. We pray for your spirit to attend to all that is uh, before us, that uh, we would contemplate and meditate on these truths. That you'd forgive us for our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. May you help us now, we pray for Christ's sake. Amen. Well, we've already considered the uh, very important chapter of Exodus 14. We have considered the response in the song of Moses and how we too are to respond to God that way for the great salvation that he has wrought for us. We come to Exodus 16, we see now the way in which God provides for the people as they journey, as they are moving from the place of bondage to the place of worship at Mount Sinai, they are certainly going to get hungry. And there's a lot of people to feed. And so God provides. He provides bread from heaven and we note that, as we see in verse 4, the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I am about to rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day that I may test them, whether they will walk in my law or not. Now, what precipitates this is, first, we note the prevailing sin of the people, where they grumble against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And again, we hear, would, they, would that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the meat pots and ate bread to the full. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. And so they're complaining, once again, lack of trust, lack of belief, lack of faith in God. They had the same problem back in Exodus 14 when they thought they were going to be destroyed by the Egyptians so that God, God did all this work to free them and then he's just going to abandon his people to the devices and efforts of evil people. And now here they are and again, God's just going to abandon them to hunger and let them starve to death. Well, that's certainly not the case. God tells Moses that he's going to provide bread from heaven whether they'll walk as a test of whether they will walk in my law or not. Now, what's the test? Well, the test is here. Verse 5, on the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather daily. So Moses and Aaron said to all the people of Israel, At evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your grumbling against the Lord. Interesting. They were grumbling at Moses, but... Ultimately, they're grumbling at the Lord. And that's us, too. When we enter into murmuring and complaining and about events and circumstances in our lives, we are really ultimately complaining against the Lord's providence. It's really a grievous sin, and it really should not be numbered amongst the people. I recognize the, the, the ease of, of it happening, but it's still a sin nonetheless, and as God's people, we should seek to mortify that. But moving on, um, Moses said, when the Lord gives you in the evening to meat to eat and the morning bread to the full, because the Lord has heard your grumbling that you grumble against him, what are we? Your grumbling is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, say to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, come near before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. And as soon as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the people of Israel. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. And so in the evening, quail comes up and covers the, the camp, and in the morning, dew lay around the camp. And when the dew had gone up, there was on the face of the wilderness a fine flake-like thing, fine as frost on the ground. When the people of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Gather, and this is the test. Now here's the test. Gather of it each one of you as much as he can eat. You shall each take an omer according to the number of the persons that each, each of you has in his tent. 
And the people of Israel did so. They gathered, some more, some less. But when they measured it with an omer, whoever gathered much had nothing left over, and whoever gathered little had no lack. Each of them gathered as much as he could eat. And Moses said to them, Let no one leave any of it over till the morning. But they did not listen to Moses. Okay, so fail. Moses told them, you know, take as much as you can eat, but that's it. Don't be hoarding it and leaving it for the next day. Some left part of it till the morning, and it bred worms and stank, and Moses was angry with them. Morning by morning they gathered it, each as much as he could eat, but when the sun grew hot, it melted. On the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread, two omers each, and when all the leaders of the congregation came and told Moses, he said to them, This is what the Lord has commanded. Tomorrow is a day of solemn rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you will bake, and boil what you will boil, and all that is left over lay aside to be kept till the morning. So they laid it aside till the morning, as Moses had commanded them. And it did not stink, and there were no worms in it. Moses said, Eat it today, for today is a Sabbath to the Lord. Today you will not find it in the field. Six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is a Sabbath, there will be none. On the seventh day some of the people went out and gathered out to gather, but they found none. The Lord said to Moses, How long will you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws? See, the Lord has given you the Sabbath. Therefore, on the sixth day he gives you bread for two days. Remain each of you in his place. Let no one go out of his place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. Now here we have, of course, highlighted for us the very initial um, practical outworkings of the Sabbath day, the Lord's day. The principle is, uh, predates even the giving of the Mosaic Law in Exodus 20. It is a day that is to be set apart and holy to the Lord. Unfortunately, in our day and age in which we live, this particular command, and that's what it is, a command, uh, is regularly violated by God's people. Uh, they attend to matters that have no bearing or no basis in the purpose of the day. They go out to restaurants, they engage in other recreational activities that have nothing to do with the worship of God, and they refuse to honor and keep the day that the Lord has declared different from all the others. And we know that it's different because if we go back all the way to the beginning of Genesis, we look at Genesis chapter 2, there we see in the very opening verse, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it God rested from all his work that he had done. Now this differs from the other six days that he called good. He calls this day holy. It's separate. It's different. This is, predates the fall. This was a, a creation mandate that was in place for God's creatures that he had made that they might do as he has done, by example. That they might spend that day in the public and private exercises of God's worship. They are not to labor in jobs that are unnecessary. That is to say, jobs that do not fall into the category of mercy or necessity. And here, God provides for them twice as much the day before the Sabbath that they might not have to labor for their daily bread. Sadly, we live in a world in which we don't trust the Lord enough in this area. We think for some reason we have to do this on the Lord's Day because if we don't, we can't pay our bills, we might get fired, we might lose our job. I could tell you story after story of people uh, that I have counseled and advised as they look for work to be very clear with their employer right up front that you will not work on the Lord's Day. I'm not talking about jobs that are of mercy or necessity. For instance, uh, there was a hurricane in Florida. People are working seven days a week. We've got people that are starving. We've got people without electricity. We've got people without power, without all sorts of things. That's certainly an act of necessity. We know people in the church who are doctors or are nurses firemen, policemen, and they're called to work on Sunday. Well, people get sick on the Lord's Day. People uh, break the law on the Lord's Day. These are jobs of necessity. And there's jobs of mercy as well. Laboring in a soup kitchen or a homeless shelter or doing those kinds of things for the impoverished of our world are jobs and works of, uh, of mercy. And Jesus highlights these things for us. 
The test, of course, is whether the people of God will trust the Lord and believe Him and do what He has then therefore said. The other important part of this chapter that can't be ignored is how the Lord Jesus Christ is indeed the very bread from heaven. He is, in fact, the manna that came down from heaven, for He did come down from heaven, and Jesus says so Himself in John uh, chapter 6, and uh, looking at verses 40, uh, well, just really beginning with verse 41, um, John chapter 6, beginning with verse uh, 41, so the Jews grumbled about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. It sounds so familiar to the Exodus 16 event. They said, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How does he now say I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not grumble among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except he who is from God. He has seen the Father. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. That's true. They ate. The next day they ate. They kept eating and they died. Just like us. We eat every day, but we're going to eventually die. And so they ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the, for the life of the world is my flesh. And so this manna here in Exodus 16 is clearly picturing the coming of the Messiah, coming of the Lord Jesus Christ as the bread of life. And as we place our trust in Him, as we eat of Him, as it were, we then have eternal life. This is the bona fide promise of our Savior, that He, the one who came down from heaven as the bread of life is the one that we can eat and never, ever die. Well, I trust these times are helpful for you. I hope they are. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave me a note. The way to contact me is there before you on the screen. And so until the Tuesday edition, when we consider Exodus 17, may the Lord guide you and bless you even this day. God bless.